a lot of us off the estate were getting involved in that sillier stuff, you know, crime and stuff. I'm on top of the world, I'm on top of the world. I went bad when I was growing up, but I was started drinking from a young age and smoking. I'm on top of the world, I'm on top of the world. Without the generator, without the positive people in Roehampton, I probably would have been in jail by now. I'm on top of the world, I'm on top of the world. I don't know, I'd just probably be on the streets doing nothing really. Just, just doing nothing with my life. I'm on top of the world. I'm on top of the world. At a young age of 11, I decided what's the easiest way for me to get money. And what I saw was selling drugs. I ended up going to prison. I'm on top of the world. I'm on top of the world. I could have been in prison by now, or probably even dead, but I'm here. and. Uh, you know, like, um, if it weren't for Andy and like Regenerate supporting me, then you know, who knows what could have happened. Yeah, I moved on to the estate in 1996 and uh, just got a flat with a few friends. I was made aware of some of the needs on the estate such as very little provision for young people. I'd see young people on the estate getting into all sorts of trouble and just living in the community, myself, a few of my friends, we got together and we started to dream a little bit about maybe we could do something to make a difference. And we opened a lunch club for pensioners. We started meeting young people that were coming to the old people's lunch club saying, there's nothing for us to do around here. What do you and your friends want to do? And he said, oh, we want to play football and we want to go on trips. And it started from there. Um, I was about 11 when I first got involved with Regenerate. He came to my school and a bunch of us were just thinking, who are these guys? At that time, no one really cared. In Roehampton, there was no one doing the kind of things that Regenerate do now. So it was really sort of strange and new to us all. We grew to really like Andy and now we've pretty much got a special bond with him. He's always been like a father figure to us. So we're just trying to create magic moments and experiences for young people as we just got alongside them and looked to support them. And over time we've started mentoring programs, we've started a music studio. We got hold of an old shop on the estate which is now a juice bar drop-in centre for young people. Someone gave us a gift of £10,000 and we used that gift to go and buy the double-decker bus. We were doing things on the Alton estate but there are a number of other estates out surrounding the Alton estate, so we take the bus to where the young people are on the street and go there at the same time, every week, same place, and uh, just begin engaging with young people on those estates. A load of young people that were coming to our football club, we thought we want to do something a little bit more with them. We saw the potential in them to be leaders, so we just said to them, that we believe in you, you've got so much potential. We're going to meet together every month for a meal and we're going to get people to come and speak who are leaders in business, in community, in church, in whatever field of life and try and inspire them and then match these young people up with mentors. Loads of them turned up and we went on an adventure with those guys for a good few years. Some of that original group are now the mentors for the younger people that are coming through on the estate. The mentoring is really just about me trying to give back. The sessions that we have, like we have, we'd have them every week with all the kids, it's a good way to get them off the streets and doing things they shouldn't be doing. Being around positive people, just positive energy. Hopefully I can emulate that same sort of vibe towards the, like the mentoring programme. We're very well known here in Roehampton because our juice bar and our office is in the main parade of shops. It's a safe space for young people. A guy called uh, Andy come out to me and he, he was like, oh, uh, you know, all your mates are in the youth club, why don't you come in? You know, I thought, why do I want to pay a pound to get in this place? I went in there and that's where it all began. I'm really passionate about music and coming here, I've really enjoyed working with young people who are talented and maybe just haven't had the right opportunities to be able to record their music or perform their music or even know how to write it. One day when I moved to Roehampton about four years ago, I saw a member of the Regenerate staff and I was doing a bit something to do with music and he said, come in here, there's a studio. 
So then I booked a session and the next week I came in there and then that's how I've been involved with them. It's been amazing for me seeing Micah, for example, from the age of eight when he first came here doing a music workshop, to how much he's grown and developed, not only like as a musician, but as a person through, through his music. I hope to be a famous music star one day. So in 2004, I went on a trip with some friends to Kenya. I met a group of people that were doing a camp for street kids in Kenya, and they said to me, Oh, would you like to bring some young people from London, mix them together and do a camp together? So we took eight young people from the Alton Estate here in Roehampton on that trip. You know, taking somebody off a of London council estate who's never seen anywhere outside of England to, like, such a completely different environment and, you know, gave me a perspective of, like, how hard I thought my life was in compared to other people and it just taught me, like, a whole new set of values and stuff and that experience has stayed with me ever since. So there was one young person on that first trip called Luke. I ain't seen him for a while and he was like, Luke, uh, is it, can, can we have a chat? He's like, just out of the blue, would you like to come to Kenya? So I was like, wow, that's a lifetime opportunity, you know? It was like, you know, it was, it was just one of them things where you think, is this for real? You know, am I actually hearing this? While we were on the camp, he met some young people from a slum and um, he told them that he was going to be, he was a mechanic, he was an apprentice mechanic, earning £100 a week. These kids from the slums said, you know, we haven't got jobs, we have to get our food out of dustbins, you know, we want to be mechanics. So Luke turned around to them on that camp and said, OK, I'll build you a garage. After four days, um, we actually went to see where they lived and uh, it, it broke my heart. It hit home, you know. I thought, in the whole of this world, why do people live like this? What can I do to help these people? You know, I've got a skill. I'm a mechanic. So um, I decided to build a garage out in Kenya. I was 18 at the time. I went and bought some land, um, you know, and I never looked back since. As a result of that, Luke came back from Kenya, turned his life around completely. So we've done probably 12, 13 trips and loads and loads of young people from the Alton Estate and from other estates now in London have been involved in that process. The powerful thing is when young people see a place where there is more, much more extreme poverty than what we've got here and they're kind of, you can appreciate what you have actually got. But the more important thing I think and the more powerful thing is that young people are then going there to help other people. It does something within them, a belief within themselves that they can actually do something with their lives, they can make a difference. And that's when we see the real change. Um, I guess it's to see a different way of life, I guess, like to appreciate what I have. Like you think turning on a light switch, like you don't ever thank anyone for that. Whereas when I went, I've been twice, so the second time I went, we put our money, our budget money towards giving the girls electricity and they were clapping, crying and thanking us. It's like, that I don't thank my mum for giving me electricity. I'm like, yeah, my light's on. If it doesn't work, I change the bulb. So it makes you think that you don't need all the finer things in life. It's just happiness is what you need. Got a hold of Andy, pestered him for months upon months and said, I need to go to a trip to Kenya. And that trip literally changed, changed my life. In my head, I started to think, wow, like, what am I doing? You know, risking my life to try to get financial gain and I need to be a positive role model for my son. And I really thought I need to be part of a solution. I can't be part of the problem. It's helped me, especially by the trip, to realise that I am more worthy than of what I thought I was. The exciting thing for me about Regenerate, looking back over the last 12 or 13 years, is when young people that have grown up come into our activities and to our projects, we're now making a difference in this community and other communities all over the world. So you've had young people from this estate that have had really difficult times, got caught up in all the wrong sort of stuff, but who are now making a difference and are now changing other people's lives. And that's how we want to see things grow and spread. He doesn't give up. Quite a lot of uh, adult figures in the Hampton are not as positive. And like I said, there's not many sort of groups of people that have the same sort of enthusiasm as Regenerate. Like, they will focus their time and energy on actually trying to make things positive. Basically, I've learned that it doesn't matter. As long as I have food on the table and I can eat and I'm, su I'm surviving, that's what it really matters. Like, I'm not really too bothered about anything else. Like before, obviously you want everything and you do stupid things to get that. But now it's just, you work, as long as you're supporting your family 
and you're alive. That's, that's the main objective, really. There's always something they can take part in and there's always help whenever they need it. If, if you're ever worried about anything, there's always someone you can talk to. Like, no matter what it is, they'll literally bend over backwards to help you. So I think if it wasn't here, I think um, everything the people complain about, the youths out on the streets and, you know, they're disaffected, this and that, I think they'll just get a lot, whole lot worse. Through creativity, it allows you to dream and work towards those dreams, which has got to be a positive thing, I think. We want to see young people going from here, from the Alton estate, being like a launch pad for like world mission, so to speak. You know, we've sent a lot of young people on trips overseas. We want to increase that. We want to increase what we're doing here to see, really see something happen on this estate, which will be like a beacon of light. We're excited about the future. I'm on top of the world. I'm on top of the world. I'm on top of the world.